there is something fair in life is aging. Because whether you're poor or you're rich, we all age one day at a time. And the thing that we all have in common is nobody wants to age. So what I'm going to be presenting today is the research that we have been doing to try to delay aging. So if you want to hear about this, you have to give me a big yes. Yes! Okay. Right on. So here is what I'm going to try to show you is here we have a young individuals and a whole individuals. And what's happened is you know, when we're young, we have a lot of stem cells. And those stem cells are very active. They release a lot of factors. And this is why our kids heal very fast when they injure themselves. When we get older, we have less stem cells. And those stem cells are not very active. So this is why we're not repairing our tissue very well. So what we're trying to do here is not to take someone older to make him younger, is to take someone older and make him age healthier. So here is, you know, what we have been doing. So you probably have seen, you know, this on TV, you know, those progeria patients. They are like 10 years of age, and they look like 85 years of age. They age very fast. Sure enough, we made a transgenic mice here. This mice, you know, has the same mutation, gene mutation, as the progeria patient, and this mice age very fast as well. This mice, you know, live only 21 days. A normal mice will live two years. So what we ask is we found that the stem cell from those mice, you know, get depleted very fast. So what we ask is if we inject young stem cell to those mice, can we make them live longer than 21 days? And here, this is what's happened. You can see the, the red bar here, the mice injected with those stem cells, you can see now they live for up to 70 days. Not only do they live longer, but they look better too. So I don't know if a mice can look better, but those mice look better than the non-injected mice. So the bottom line here is what we found is those progeria mice, if you inject young stem cells, you can make them live longer, and they look healthier as well. So what that means for all of us today? So that means that the best gift we can give to our newborn is to bang their stem cells. At birth, from the umbilical cord, you can bang their stem cells. And after this, those cells, again, we can harvest the stem cells, we can grow millions of them, and what we're going to do is we're going to bank them. As soon as we put them, we freeze them up, those cells stop their aging. 20 years later, they come in a veil and they ski and they injure themselves. Then we can tie those cells, put this in a syringe, and basically treat them. And again, not only after an injuries, but maybe we can, if they, they look older a little bit, so maybe we can inject their stem cells to delay their aging process. The same thing is true for all the soldiers. Just think about if we were able to do this with all the soldiers. We harvest the stem cells before they go to the battlefield. And what's happened is if they have an injury, they come back, so we have stem cells to treat them. Think about those astronauts. They go on the moon, they face radiation. So harvesting their stem cells before they go on the shuttle, they come back, then we have their stem cells to treat them. So this is really preventive medicine. I know what you're thinking, though. You're probably thinking, we're too old for this because we're not taking a birth here. So what we did is we asked a question. Many people tell me, I'm way too old to, to get my stem cells bank. You're never too old for that, because let me give you an example. If at birth, let's say that all your stem cells are good. At 50 years of age, let's say that 50% of them are very good. At 75, maybe 25% of them are very good. So what, when we do the banking, we can identify the good stem cells, and this is the one that we grow millions of them. But you will tell me, what's happened with the ones that are not so good? So we did a lot of research recently, and we found that we find a way to take a whole stem cells to make them young again. And I'm going to go in details a little bit here in, in genetics, but the bottom line here, we found that when a young stem cells get old, we have a protein complex there called mTOR, and this protein complex takes a young stem cells and make them old. Why is that important for us? Because we find drug, we are looking for drug that can block these mTOR pathways. And it turns out that one of the drugs here is rapamycin. Rapamycin is an FDA-approved drug. It's an immunosuppressive agent. And rapamycin is able to block the mTOR and prevent your stem cells to get old. And sure enough, now people are using rapamycin. Here we have done some studies in rats, in mice. When you give them rapamycin, they live longer, they live healthier. And now you have people that take rapamycin because it's an FDA-approved drug already. They have side effects associated with it, but your doctor can decide. 
Not only that, but another drug here. This drug here, you know, it's a diabetic drug, metformin. Metformin has been used to delay aging for many years now. This is a drug, the cost of it is almost nothing, and these drugs appear to be very good to delay aging as well. We have done a lot of science to try to understand where the stem cells come from, because you have stem cells in your liver, you have stem cells in your fat, in your bone marrow, in your muscle. So it turns out that we found that stem cells come from the blood vessels. All the micro vessels that you have in your tissues, this is where stem cells come from. And why is that important? Because if I can increase the number of blood vessels, I should be able to increase the number of stem cells. And the best way to increase the number of blood vessels, folks, is exercise. Because when you do exercise, you increase the number of blood vessels in your brain, in your heart, in your muscle. And sure enough, we wanted to prove it, right? We put mice on treadmill. Mice <laughs> are very lazy in nature. Mice, they eat, they drink, they sleep. Those ones do not. Those ones run. But sure enough, when we run them, and after this, if we injure their muscle, their bone, they heal significantly faster than the mice that are sitting in their cage doing nothing. And I just would like to say that some experiment has been done recently. Instead of injuring those mice that were running, they inject cancer cells to those mice. All the mice that were sitting in their box not running, you know, they all died from that tumor, which is expected. 50% of the mice that were running survived that tumor. So again, folks, exercise is very good for you. And again, timing is everything. This issue of Time magazine that was published last year, you need to get that issue, but it is very important. They show that research linked to exercise to less depression, better memory, quicker learning. You know, if, if you do exercise, you're going to keep yourself younger. And sure enough, exercise has been shown to extend lifespan you know, by as much as five years. So now, I just would like to finish by saying that not only your stem cells get old when you get older, your blood gets old as well. And what we have done here, you're going to find this a little bit funny, but what we take, we take a, two mice and we stitch them together, stitch their skin together. And what we found, if you stitch a young mice to a whole mice, okay, you're going to rejuvenate the whole mice. The whole mice with the young blood from the young mice now, the, young, the whole mice now can repair their muscle, their bone, their heart better, showing clearly that the young blood can rejuvenate the whole mice. So maybe after all, not only we need to bank your stem cells, we may need to bank your blood as well, because your blood is maybe something you can use down the road. And finally, this is my best part here. Do you know that women live longer than men? Yeah, I know the women are laughing, the men are like, are you crazy or what? <laughs> women live longer than men, and on average, in the United States, women live on average 80 years old, the man is 74. Why women live longer than men? People will tell you, well, men were crazy, okay? We secret testosterone, we take risks. <laughs> I went skiing this morning, I went downhill. But this is not the reason why women live longer than men, folks. You know why? Because if you take mice, if you take rat, if you take rabbits, the female always outlive the male. And they don't ski and they don't bike, they don't do any of that. <laughs> so clearly there is something more biologic about that about why women live longer than men. And we think that this is when the, mod, when the woman is pregnant, she's connected to her fetus. And the fetus is the young, and the woman is old, older. So the bottom line is you have factor <laughs> coming from the fetus that help the mother. And again, we have done a study on this, and we, we, we asked the question, we said, well, if a woman that has never been pregnant, on average, doesn't live longer than men suggesting that maybe pregnancy play a role. Here's a paper showing that women who have been pregnant between the age of 40 to 50 years of age have extreme longevity. In this paper, the women that they were pulling in this paper were living over 100 years old. So again, maybe during pregnancy, you suffer, but you're getting a lot of payback from the fetus. <laughs> so I just would like to say that even if I discover pills for anti-aging or bank your stem cells, there is a lot of things. It's not only one shot and we're going to cure everything. So we believe that down the road, we can become your personal trainer for aging. So we can bank your stem cells. We can also bank your blood. We can give you anti-aging drugs. We can exercise. It's very important, but too much is not good. So you have to exercise the right way. Nutrition is very important, folks. But also, like I said to people, you have to work with us. 
If I give you the best drug to delay aging, but you're dressing like you know, 20 years older than you are, then you're going to look older. So I think you know, all those things, mediation, yoga, you know, all play a role here too. So I just would like to say that maybe down the road, we're going to become your personal trainer for health aging. And I just would like to finish by saying that science and heart can come together at one point. Down the road, maybe when you bank your stem cells, we can make a very nice frame with your own stem cells on it that you can display in your house. And when you're going to show this to your friend, you're going to say, this is my stem cells here. <laughs> so again, I just would like to finish by saying that you have probably noticed, you know, I'm Canadian. And everything that we do in Canada relates to hockey. So here is it. A good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. So as scientists, I can tell you, five years from now, seven years from now, you are going to have your stem cells bank, because that's the right thing to do. So thank you very much for your attention.